Mugen Train. After the EU release, I finally got the chance to watch the Demon Slayer movie and it was incredibly amazing. And I'm not the only one to think that. On my anime list, it's one of the highest rated movie. In Japan, it's the highest grossing movie of all time. But how? How could a shonen movie get done this well? We are used to the fact to see slice of life movies on the top, yet this is just so much different. What this movie did differently than the Dragon Ball Broly or even the My Hero Academia movie? Well, it never focused solely on action. When you watch a shonen movie, you watch it because you want to see something packed with constant action with a fairly simple structure. It has a motive, a climax which is the satisfying part, when the viewer gets rewarded for going that far into the movie, and the conclusion at the end which is usually the aftermath of the fight. Now the Demon Slayer movie has a much more complicated structure. They build it up the movie with a constant change of emotional state to make your brain work over and over, to make you feel engaged, to make you feel connected to the characters on an emotional level. It goes from curiosity, to cheerfulness, to fear, to sadness, to pain, to greed, to upset in just a matter of minutes to don't let your brain get distracted from the movie. While all of this happens, the movie constantly teases you with action, it constantly builds up dopamine, 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 but it just won't let you release it. It constantly just teases you that it will happen at some point. After constantly keeping up this quick pace, constantly changing everything every single minute, the movie slows down by a lot, throwing out the pacing that you got used to, foreshadowing that something big will happen. At the same time, the movie just throws out all the emotional states, leaving you just with one, with regret. The focus of the movie changes to Tanjiro and only to Tanjiro. It wants you to forget that anyone else exists. It wants you to forget that he is fighting with a demon. It forces you to have an emotional connection with him to make the climax more satisfying. It starts with two really different things that movies rarely put together and only focus on one of them. By building up the climax both emotionally and physically, you will get a type of satisfaction that you never felt before, mainly because you were never prepared for it in the first place. The movie just does this extremely well and throws both of it at the same time. You will feel sorry for Tanjiro, but it will reward you with the fact that he was able to break out of it, that he was able to differentiate his regret from the reality and use it as a motivation to fight his demon and beat him. This is the exact same thing as what they did in episode 19. They made sure to have this emotional build up, then an outbreak, connect it with the fight despite the fact that it has nothing to do with it and leave you satisfied by beating this demon. This is usually where the movies end, and this movie could also just end here. It would be perfect. Yet we are barely halfway through the movie. In a movie theater you don't know how far you are in. Your focus slowly starts to fade away because your brain is used to the fact that the movie should end any minute. Knowing that, they use the exact same structure but in the opposite order because they have to keep you engaged. They instantly throw in a shock factor by starting with the climax, by introducing a really strong demon. The shock combined with the constant action once again generates dopamine. But they won't give you the satisfying part this time. Once again, they just tease you. They continue the same way as in the first half to make your brain think that it will go through the exact same process. And they will keep going on that very same structure until the last second. They keep building it up emotionally, making it seem like the Trengoku will win the fight. They make sure to make it seem like he did, just so your brain will release all the dopamine. By throwing in another shock factor at the end of the climax, it will leave you with a really unusual feeling, where it's really easy for them to control you emotionally, making you cry at the moment. The movie then switches focus from the death of Rengoku, so you won't have an instant emotional outburst. By making the demon run away, you will feel angry, you will feel upset, but at the end, it will make you want to watch more of it because you want to see that demon suffer, you want to see that demon die, which at the end of the day is their goal. If they can make you have a reason to watch the next season, then they failed. The movie once again breaks up the pace and it makes sure to take it as slowly as possible where it lets you completely break out emotionally and just keep it for as long as possible. It's just such a perfect way of directing and writing combined. It's nothing special, we've seen this type of scenes thousands of times, but the way they presented it, it made you much more engaged. 
One more interesting fact about it is that you don't have to watch the first episode to understand what's happening in the movie. It introduces us to every single character, like it's the first time we see them, and it's not noticeable at all. Unlike in something like My Hero Academia, where every 10th episode is a reintroduction of every character, they made it perfectly blending with the dreams they had. Just by watching it, you understood what type of character they are. They didn't force a 10 minute flashback scene. I just love the movie and can't wait for season 2, which just as I said was exactly their goal. I hope you could learn something from this video, I hope you enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe and like. Have a great day, good night.